Same time, same place, same station. Tune into the breath. There is a purpose in all this. Keep coming back to the breath, coming back to the breath. That's when you go back and forth over something really carefully, many, many times, that you really see when there are subtle differences. It's like the story of Mark Twain on the Mississippi River. He was going to help a captain, learn how to be a steamboat captain. And part of the training was learning every bend in the river, which meant you had to go over the river many, many times. And that's a river with a lot of bends. Your mind has mo more bends than that. So if you're going to see them clearly, you have to come right back to one place. It's like an experiment where you try to have some controls to minimize the number of changes. So the big changes are the changes in the mind itself. Some of the changes will be in the breath, other aspects of the body. And you have to take those into consideration as you settle down. But most of the changes are in the mind. What you're thinking today as you come to the meditation is different from what you were thinking about yesterday and the day before. And how is that going to affect the way you settle down? Because sometimes a technique you used yesterday or a way of thinking about the breath or a way of thinking about the mind that worked isn't going to work today. Now, that doesn't mean you should give up on trying to develop a skill. Some people do. They say, well, it's just all very hit or miss, so each moment is a fresh experience. But that's not helpful at all. You have to realize there are certain variables, and they're a finite number. There may be many, but they're finite. You can think of the orbit of the moon. It wasn't until the 1950s that they finally figured out how to calculate where the moon was going to be at any one time, because there are so many different variables pulling at its orbit. They counted them, 1,500. That required a computer. Fortunately, your mind is closer, and so you can see the variables more clearly, where there's greed, where there's anger, where there's delusion. Those are the big three ones. But it is a finite number, and you can begin to gain a sense of when the mind, as they say in the forest tradition, is leaning forward, leaning back, leaning left, leaning right, forward into the future, back into the past, left to what you like, right to what you don't like. And you begin to get a sense of what you need to do to get the mind back in place, so it's not leaning in any of those directions. So it's good to have one place to keep coming back, coming back. You get to know it really well. And getting to know the breath really well, you get to know the mind well as well. And that's what counts, because all the suffering in the world, there's lots of suffering that comes from outside, but the suffering that weighs the mind down is the suffering that comes from within. And when you take care of this problem, then the suffering from outside wouldn't weigh on the mind at all.